Hey everyone, this is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. Today we have the Fender American Civil War, the shootout between these fantastic Telecaster, Smellacaster guitars. That's what I affectionately call mine. Um, you know, the Telecaster is a fantastic guitar, and what we wanted to show you today is all of the various models and series that Fender makes in the United States. Most people want a Fender that's built in the US. Um, that's kind of something that a lot of guitarists aspire to. And that's not to take anything away from the other guitars they make. In fact, Fender makes some of the best value in guitars that's around because the stuff, whether it's from their Squire brand or the Made in Mexico or Jap Japan product uh, that says Fender on the headstock, they're all really great guitars and you can get them at a fantastic value. But when you step up to Made in USA, what does that mean? So we're going to look at a few different models, some, uh, some kind of tried and true, very familiar ones, some newer uh, things that Fender's coming out with, um, and, and maybe a wild card or two um, to see who comes out on top, what you tend to prefer, and really what options you get at the price point. What I'm holding here with this beautiful Polytune <laughs> tuner on in my lap, this is Custom Shop. Um, this is a no caster, um, and we'll talk about this one in a little bit when we get to it, but this is kind of where we're going to, um, and it's also kind of where, where we came from uh, when we're talking about Fender and the Telecaster, because this is kind of where it all started, um, and then we're going to uh, start looking at what they're currently offering. We're going to be playing today through a... Uh, 65 reissued deluxe reverb from Fender. That's a made in the US all tube amplifier. That's fantastic. We've got it cranked on uh, the first channel to about almost five. So we're driving those tubes a little bit, but we're also going to give you a little bit more spank um, using a Electro Harmonics Soul Food overdrive pedal, which is a really great kind of transparent uh, overdrive that can just push and give you a little bit of a uh, little bit of gristle a little bit of that uh, that you want uh, when you're, you know, driving the amp a little bit more. So, uh, before we actually start here, let's start at the other end of the line. So we're going to set that there, and uh, this will be be a little bit different because I kind of want to play as I talk to you about these, so you get an idea of what's going on. So this beautiful blue beauty um, in my lap, this is an American Special. Uh, Telecaster. So this is where the U.S. line starts. At just over $1,000, you can get a Made in the USA Stratocaster or Telecaster. Um, and what Fender does is they streamline this series in order to get it to this price point by uh, basically giving you more vintage style hardware um, at least in the, as far as the bridge is concerned, um, little planar tuners than what you'd find on the American Pro, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, you still have a choice between rosewood and maple on these. Uh, and the reason I, the reason I say still is because if you look at the made in Mexico, uh, guitars from Fender and, and really a lot of, uh, value guitars from a lot of, D, uh, companies, they are making guitars with Palferro or some kind of alternative to Rosewood because of some new regulations regarding Rosewood. So in the U.S. line, though, the American Special still has a Rosewood or Maple fingerboard. Um, it's your typical Telecaster. It's got the more vintage-style bridge. Um, there's nothing really fancy going on here. It's three-way switch, volume, master tone, and then it's got uh, Texas Special uh, pickups on it for the bridge and the neck pickup. Overall, it's a fantastic value of guitar uh, built in their Corona California factory. It does not come with a case. 
you're going to get a gig bag with this instead. And that's again all part of trying to get this guitar made in the US in the same factory that the American professionals and a lot of these others are built without really breaking the bank. But as you'll hear, you really get that uh, Telecaster sound. Um, now, something that's great about Tele, I'm gonna showcase all this for you, but the, the two pickups and the three-way toggle is, is kind of the stroke of genius that Leo Fender came up with because the way the pickups are designed, you have so much versatility. The bridge is got a lot of output. It's very bright. You can drive an amp with this single coil just as much as you can with most humbuckers. Um, the neck is extremely warm, so it's like this Jekyll and Hyde kind of personality between them. And then in the middle, you get the best of both worlds, and it blends and can give you really kind of a stratty sound to it. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So on the bridge pickup clean, we've got this. Right, there's your Telecaster. But then you've got this nice warm neck, right? And in between, you've got this. So really a lot of versatility there before we even put the spank on it. So at your bridge pickup, it will drive the amp. So that's the American Special. A lot of bang for your buck. And really, a rock solid guitar that anybody could gig with, made right here in the US of A, in America. So the next thing that you have in the offerings in the US is the American Professional line. Now, the American Professional has been out for a few years, um, but I still hear a lot of people say American Standard. And the American Standard was kind of the flagship line that Fender had for a number of years, and fairly recently they switched it over to being called the American Professional line. And that was to do a number of things. That was to kind of better articulate who they're building the guitar for, not that you couldn't gig with the standard or, or any of the made in Mexico or Japan uh, guitars, but really that this is their flagship. Um, and along with it, there were some changes. The neck is now a deep C as opposed to say the standard C-shaped neck or, or modern C that you'll feel on like the American Special that I just played and many others. Um, the pickups were redesigned. These are V-mod or vintage modified pickups. Um, you know, a host of little changes, bone nuts and whatnot. And on the Telecaster, it got a new bridge, which I like. It's kind of a melding of the vintage style bridge with brass saddles um, and a more modern bridge um, that it previously had with block saddles, which we'll see on another guitar here in a second. Um, I tend to prefer this. I think it gives you that tele twang, that sound, um, and it's pretty comfortable on the, the palm of the hand as well. And, you know, finally, uh, thankfully, Fender started offering the Professional, this flagship, and Butterscotch on the Telecaster, where it previously didn't. You had to go to one of the more vintage models to get that. Um, and I'm glad because I think it's just the, it's the quintessential color for a Telecaster. You could get it in a lot of other colors, but I'm glad this one is available. So let's let you hear kind of what this sounds like. All right, so American Professional starting with the bridge pickup. A 
little heavier string than I usually play. Let's see. Middle pickup. And the warm neck pickup. If we put a little spank on it, this one has gone drive a little bit more than that American Standard. So that's your American professional. Uh, like I said, bone nut, vintage tall, uh, frets on it, slightly deeper neck, uh, new pickups. And if you get into this color, it is ash instead of alder. Some finishes are alder. And that does change the tonality a little bit. Um, Sometimes people think ash is lighter. That's not always the case. It's really depending upon the particular timbers used in the guitar. Um, but ash, I think, tends to have not really a brighter tone, but maybe a little bit more of a transparent tone um, where it's not taking away so much, whereas alder maybe rounds off some of the treble a little bit. So ash definitely gives you more of that kind of telly tone, particularly with a maple fretboard on it. Um, and this one's, you know, right at about 1500 bucks, roughly, is what you're looking for uh, on an American Professional Series. Now, if you look at everything in the American Professional Series and you don't see what you're looking for, Fender's got you covered there. And this is kind of a wild card, uh, something that is special and unique that we happen to have that we've uh, spec'd out that we want to show you. This is not something you're going to find in Fender's catalog at all. This is a Telecaster from the Mod Shop. Now, if you're not familiar with what the Mod Shop is, it's basically a way of customizing a guitar with Fender using off-the-shelf parts, so to speak. Basically, you're choosing from a, a, a menu, um, and it's not in the custom shop. And so it's kind of an amalgam of options that Fender has available. And by going through the mod shop, um, you can make something that is uniquely yours without breaking the bank on a custom, a full on custom shop model. So it's a, think of it as like a, a customized American uh, pro or something to that effect. This particular Telecaster is really cool. Um, it is Aztec gold. We have an anodized gold pick guard. We've chosen noiseless pickups in this. And some people, you know, I like Greg Cox said this once. He said, uh, some people complain, oh, it doesn't sound like real noise or real single coils. Uh, and he calls those people unemployed. Yeah, but if you're a touring guitarist, you know that sometimes you're going to be in some kind of uh, gig at a small venue and there's weird electricity and you're next to the popcorn machine or whatnot. And you're really going to love noiseless single coils at that point. Uh, we've got a regular three-way uh, toggle here. Very cool channel-bound neck. I own a guitar with one of these. It's really comfortable. If you haven't seen this, basically uh, maple has been machined out of the neck and then a rosewood fingerboard has been inlaid into it. Okay. We also have locking tuners on this one and a cool mod shop uh, neck plate. So very cool guitar. Uh, let's let you hear what it sounds like. Okay, so here's the mod shop from the bridge pickup. Okay. Best of both worlds. And 
then back to uh, Dr. Jekyll. Mr. Hyde's the evil guy, in case you haven't read the book. So Mod Shop's available in Telecaster, Stratocaster, uh, a few other things, lots of different options. If you kind of want something that's unique, um, but you kind of want to stay in the price range somewhere, or it's a little bit more than a professional model typically, kind of just above that, but south of, say, Custom Shop, um, give us a call. We can help you design one of these. They're very cool. And we've got a whole video talking about these, so definitely check that out. All right, so the next one is this Elite that we're gonna look at. Now, the Elite model was previously the Deluxe, and then like the professional, Fender did some tweaking and rebranded it. Um, but it's been really top of the line, modern Fender guitar in the American lineup, short of going to the custom shop. So you have changes for 2018, 19 are, um, some new colors. This is, I know it looks black, but it's actually mystic black. So it's kind of hard to see. Maybe it'll pick up, but there's a nice flake in it. Um, we've got noiseless pickups again, okay? Um, you've got a three-way toggle. There's also a push-push pot in the volume that gives you a different sound in the middle position. Um, if it's a Strat, it gives you different sounds in, in more than middle because obviously there's three pickups in five positions. Uh, locking tuners on here, a bone nut, and an ebony board. So for the Elite Series, and this is true on the guitars and basses, rather than maple and rosewood, you now have an option of maple and ebony. And ebony has typically been considered a really high-end fingerboard material that a lot of other electric guitar companies are going to charge you a huge premium. In other words, even the, some of their very expensive standard models will not have ebony. You'd have to order from, say, their custom shop um, and, and then pay even a premium above that to get ebony. So it's really cool. And if you're not familiar with ebony, ebony's nice. It's got that look, a dark look like rosewood does. It's got some snap to it, like maple. It's really, it's a dense wood, and so it plays really well under your fingers. It, it wears well. Um, ebony is just a really great material to have um, on the fingerboard. So uh, that's why it's been on violins for hundreds and hundreds of years. Hello. But uh, the other things on this, uh, before we play it, that we want to mention is unlike a typical Telecaster that we've seen thus far, this has got a belly carve on it. Okay, so it's a little bit more comfortable. Some people don't like that. Some people love it. Teach their own. Uh, it is bound, which is really striking. Uh, with the black, the mystic black color, that white binding's awesome. Um, we have a truss rod adjustment down here instead of up at the headstock. It's, for some people, easier to make that adjustment. Okay, so if you're gigging guitars, you need to make changes as you move to different climates. You can do that very easily. We have blocked saddles here, which are very comfortable and easy to intonate. So if you change string gauges or whatnot, you're not going to have any problem. You can dial it in there. And like I said, locking tuners up on the headstock as well. The fingerboard, um, the, the radius changes on the fretboard. So we go from uh, nine and a half to 14, I believe is what it is on these. And the back of the neck changes from a C to a D. So basically when you're up here, it's more rounded where you're probably going to have your thumb wrapped over the top of the fretboard. As you move down here where your thumb would 
really naturally kind of move to the back um, and you play faster lead lines usually, then um, it flattens out, okay? And then it goes into this nice carved heel. So as you move up above the 12th fret to around the 14th and 15th fret, uh, it's smoother. You're not going to be hitting a corner on the heel there. So, all right, so this one has really kind of sounded like it's got a little bit more gain than the other guitars, but we're gonna start again clean at the bridge pickup. Middle position. Now, you got a button. That puts the pickups from being in parallel to being in series. Sounds darker, and there's a little bit more gain, right? Because what's happening is from being in parallel, you just have the two pickups on. In series, they gain stage one another, okay? So listen. Makes it really nice. You kind of have another gear that the telly can go into. Specifically, if you want a lead kind of lick, it's really more like a, think of it as a real wide range humbucker. And so if you want to drive your amp and you want to play lead lines, but you don't want the brightness, uh, the real extreme brightness of that bridge pickup, then this is a great and versatile option. Now clean on the neck. So the Elite is extremely, extremely versatile because of the S1 switch. Secret, Stealth, Scrumptious, whatever S stands for um, in the S1 switch, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, I know a lot of guys who play these and when they want to play that lead line but they need to be a little thicker, a little more humbuckery, you hit that button and off you go, off to the races. Now, let's check out this other one down here on the end and then we'll get into some really fun stuff. So this is, actually slots in just under uh, the Elite price-wise, but I wanted to feature it separately because this is actually moving away from modern Telecasters, which is really kind of what we've been playing, um, to where things started, being a more vintage-inspired instrument. This is an American Original 50s Telecaster. Now, the American Original series is a new series from Fender, We've done some videos on it, uh, so you can check those out for kind of an exhaustive breakdown. But the gist is that Fender's making vintage-inspired instruments with a few modern appointments. The, the really modern thing about it is the neck. Um, so the neck is chunky, but the fretboard is a 9.5 inch radius instead of a typical vintage like 7.25 inch radius. And so it's a little flatter. That means you can play a little faster, you can have your action a little lower um, without really fretting out, which can happen sometimes depending upon how the guitar is set up and whatnot. Um, and it's, it's you know, generally a more, typically considered a more modern radius um, that's common on a lot of guitars and, and everything that Fender makes in the American 
professional series, the American special series, the player series from Mexico, and so forth. So um, the neck is, is really, on the fretboard at least, got a more modern feel to it. The rest of it is very vintage. Um, but they don't call this a 52 like they used to in the American vintage line because they're not pinpointing a specific year. Instead, it's from that era. So there's a 60s Telecaster, there's a 50s Telecaster, and uh, the same with the Strat. There's a 50s Strat and a 60s Strat, and then 60s Jazzmasters and Jaguars and so forth. Uh, nitrocellulose lacquer finish, everything we've looked at so far has been poly-based. Um, it's got a chunky U-shaped neck to it. Uh, bone nut, vintage F-style tuners, which I love. Uh, these are so easy to change strings on, guys. The uh, vintage style bridge, serial number there on the plate with patent. Uh, the domed knurled knobs, which are vintage, uh, correct. Pick guard, the pickups, um, everything. The color, the, uh, the look, the feel, the smell, the case. This is all from yesteryear, from the 50s, brought to our modern era, basically made more playable. It's what you might have seen, actually. There's a lot of artists who would buy these guitars back in the day, and at some point they'd have them refretted, and when they had them refretted, uh, they would go to a flatter radius. Um, and so it's really not out of the, the, the norm to find a vintage guitar that's been like player grade that someone gigged with that would kind of basically be set up like this. Um, and, it's, and it's, you know, affordable. So if you're wanting, well, I say affordable. That's relative, right? Uh, it costs less than the Elite, and it costs more than the Professional, uh, about 1800 bucks. So you get a vintage spec uh, guitar that sounds incredible for about 1800 bucks. So not too bad. Let's check it out. These are 52 Telecaster pickups, and you can tell because it just screams. That's nice. Wow, it's pretty nice for, you know, under two grand with a nitro finish kind of vintage style guitar. There you go. All right, now <laughs> we're moving really, really, really kind of back into being true to vintage form. So I want to show you two guitars. Okay, so this is Fender Custom Shop. If you're not familiar with Fender Custom Shop, let me tell you what it is. Fender Custom Shop is a smaller, 
um, definitely compared to the factory, kind of workshop of builders uh, that make the finest Fender guitars that you can get, period. Um, they make everything from one-off, highly customized instruments to reissues that are callbacks to the original instruments that Fender introduced. What I'm holding is one of those uh, callbacks to the 50s. This is a 51 no-caster. Not technically a telecaster, but a no-caster. Um, if you don't know the history, when Fender originally introduced the guitar, uh, the two pickup version, they called it a broadcaster. And they were asked by the Gretsch Corporation not to call it that because Gretsch had a drum set called the Broadcaster. Um, and so initially, kind of as a cost-cutting measure, um, they, they had all the, these labels made for the headstock and they just cut off Telecaster. Um, and so these have kind of gotten the name uh, no caster, and they were only around for a little bit. At the end of the year, the Telecaster uh, got its name, uh, you know, from where a lot of things from the 50s came from, futuristic things like television, uh, telephone, you know, telefriend. But um, so <laughs> the Telecaster was born, but these are really sought after by, uh, by collectors uh, because, again, it was, it, it really pinpoints a specific time in history, a specific time in the history of Fender and of the uh, solid body electric guitar, period. And uh, it became the Telecaster, which is one of the most famous electric guitars, period, still in production all of these years later. From the custom shop, uh, here's what you're gonna get. Now this that I'm holding is a relic, okay? Um, there's a few different finish options, and this isn't for everybody. And I, you know, I'll be honest, typically I'm really not into this. I can't stop looking at this thing. Um, typically I'm not into this sort of thing, but this guitar is so awesome. It feels like an old pair of jeans uh, that have been washed multiple times that you've worked in that are kind of getting frayed and worn. Uh, it just, it's got that feel to it. And it, this is really light. This is like six and a half pounds um, that when we weighed it. Um, and it's, so let's talk about the spec. So it's an ash body. It's got a very thin nitro finish on it that's been worn through. All of the aging is done by hand. Everyone's, every single one's kind of a little bit different. It's got checking on it and it's, and the finish has been worn through. You can see on the back, uh, the butterscotch is lighter. So, you know, if we kind of look it up, compared to that, it's been washed out, uh, which is what happens over time with these. Um, all of the hardware, has some aging and patina to it, the fretboard as well around the frets, but it plays phenomenally well. Uh, this is 6105 frets, it's a nine and a half inch radius, which um, given what I said on that with a six and, and a quarter, you might go, huh? There are actually examples of these guitars with a nine and a half inch radius. Um, it's just, it's a killer instrument. Now, let me show you something. If you like that one, let me show you this. So this is the case that this would come in. And I happen to have a wealth of riches. So this is a, another no caster, but this is a heavy relic, okay? So we'll compare these two so you can see what I'm talking about. They basically have the same spe specs, uh, the V-shaped neck, the same frets, the same pickups, no caster pickups, and so forth. A um, little bit more wear on this one, obviously, okay? So if we're looking at the two of them side by side, see how there's a little bit more wear where your arm would hit? Kind of all over the guitar, there's more patina on the hardware of these. The back of the neck uh, of the Relic still has finish except for on the sides. The back of the neck of the heavy relic is pretty much worn off. That really changes the way that this guitar feels and plays. Um, otherwise, they're pretty much the same model. Now, if you say, you know what, that's cool, but not my thing, that's okay. So there's a few different types of relicking and finish options. Um, relic and heavy relic, you also have Journeyman, which is kind of a, a taken care of guitar that's been played and has a little bit of wear. Um, you could also get a Closet Classic, which is nowhere, just put away, some yellowing on the plastics and stuff like that. 
Um, and then they have new old stock um, where it just basically uh, looks brand new pretty much. So a few different options, uh, but I love this one. So let's let you hear what it sounds like. Okay, so this is the Relic 51 Nocaster, clean. Oh, I should say, these pickups, even though they're the most vintage, have the most gain of anything we've played so far. Okay, check it out. All right, a little spank on it. So Fender Custom Shop, something also cool, if you're ever looking at these, um, something new Fender's been doing is they are including these really cool kind of leather wallets along with all the other goodies and case candy in the case. Um, and what it does is it gives you what they've had for a while, which is this. This is your certificate of authenticity, uh, kind of an important thing if you're buying something um, as precious as a Custom Shop guitar. But this is cool, this is actually your shop floor traveler um, that gives you every single spec on the guitar. Uh, the tuning keys, the fret wire, the face dots. Uh, this is actually for that guitar. So that's uh, Micarta Black.250 face dots in case you were ever wondering. Um, it has every single thing, every single spec um, that the guitar came with um, when it was being built and as it went through the shop. So. Very cool, very cool guitars, um, and there you have it. So, in the American options, if you want a Telecaster from Fender, you're looking from the American Special, I'm kind of doing the Vanna thing here, okay? Your American Special in a variety of different finishes, all the way through the uh, American Professional, American Special, American Professional, Elite, and Original. Those are your standard American lineup. You have Custom Shop, and then you have Mod Shop, which is new out of the, the regular American factory, the non-custom shop kind of customizable option, if you will. So there you have it. Um, hopefully this helped kind of discuss some of the specs, let you hear the guitars. If you ever want to design something like this, or you want to design something like this, we're here to help you kind of sort through all of the options and pick your dream guitar. So as always, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, I want to thank you for watching the videos that we produce. We put these out to help you choose the right guitar, um, understand some of the options that are out there, and to showcase some of the latest models that you may not get the opportunity to play in your local music store. If you have benefited or enjoyed watching any of our videos, then I want to tell you how you can help us to make more. We have created a new t-shirt just for guitar nuts like you and me. It's this. It says... I'm a guitar nut, 
So if you're like me, you are a guitar nut. And if you're also like me, walking around naked is probably an offense. So we want you to have this shirt. Follow the link, go to our website. These are going to be limited time and uh, you can put in a pre-order for it now. They will be shipping soon. Once they're gone, they're gone. So follow the link below and get your guitar nut shirt that only you and other guitar players will understand with a knowing week. Thanks again for watching.